Jamshed ji Tata established a trade firm in 1868. The company then branched out into cotton mills, steel industries and hotels. This is how the Tata group was born. In India, the Tata name is everywhere. From the packet of tea that wakes us up in the morning to the buses that take us to work, to the hotels and to almost everything in everyday life. No other name is as representative of the possibilities and failures of India's private sector. In Ratan Tata's ambition and through his mistakes, Tata captured the potential of a global modern India. The centuries-old conglomerate he led has grown along with India, from the first stirrings of an industrial economy in the subcontinent with its steel plant in Jamshedpur, through the dull years of socialism and the burst of post-liberalization optimism. Ratan Tata took over in 1990, a year before India began to deregulate and open up the economy. Under him, a group that made steel, trucks and chemicals quickly diversified into small cars, information technology and beyond. More importantly, beyond the country's shores. As chairman for more than two decades, Tata rapidly expanded the 156-year-old business house. It now has operations in more than 100 countries and clocked $165 billion in revenue for the year that ended in March. Under Tata's stewardship, the conglomerate embarked on an expansion drive that turned the tables on India's colonial past. It snapped up iconic British assets, including steelmaker Chorus Group in 2007 and luxury car maker Jaguar Land Rover in 2008. Beyond the successes known to the world, the failures have become folklore, often viewed with love for his plan. Come to think of it, the UK has not poured any steel this year. Apart from the global financial crisis hit in late 2008, the corporation also faced a serious threat when terrorists struck its flagship hotel in Mumbai, the Taj Mahal Palace, which is situated overlooking Mumbai's gateway of India. Honouring the victims greets guests arriving at the hotel today. Ratan Tata made personal visits to the victims' families, underscoring his people-first attitude. Tata witnessed yet another setback in the automotive industry with the nano micro cars failure. He envisioned creating an affordable car for the millions of Indians who normally rode scooters to work and school. A familiar sight on Indian roads with an entire family on two wheelers. The price tag was 100,000 rupees or $1,190. However, 10 years after its debut in 2018, production of the Nano came to an end. This was due to low demand caused by initial worries about its quality and safety. Perhaps the final business battle Tata fought was his most gratifying. In yet another feather in the hat for the group, after nearly 90 years of state ownership, Tata Sons reclaimed the nation's main airline, Air India, in 2021. The sale allowed Tata to reintroduce an airline that JRD had built. On his personal life front, Ratan Tata never married and had no children of his own. Ratan Tata's business empire is likely to be taken over by his half-brother Noel Tata and his kin. Noel Tata has three children, Maya, Neville and Leah Tata. Business Bureau report, we on World is One.